You're listening to The Real Wealth Show with Kathy Fetke, the real estate investor's resource. Imagine owning rental properties across the U.S. when you don't even live in the country, let alone in the same city as your investments. I'm Kathy Fetke, and welcome to The Real Wealth Show. Our guest today has been an expert in investing out of state because she's been living out of the country with her husband, who is in the military. And they built up quite a portfolio, and she's here to tell us how she did it. So, Leah, welcome back to The Real Wealth Show. Thanks so much for having me, Kathy. I'm happy to be here. Well, you just gave a really great presentation at Real Wealth, and I thought maybe we could go over a little bit of what you shared on the basics of real estate investing. Seems more important than ever to really understand uh, hard assets and how to create cash flow and appreciation during these times. So, let's start with your story of how you got started in real estate and how you got started as an investment counselor at Real Wealth. Yeah. So um, prior to really, I think, getting serious about real estate, we were kind of subscribing to the traditional means of planning for retirement, maxing out 401ks and IRAs and um, trying to be pretty diligent about that. And at some point, I think we, and, and I think some of it happened you know, once my husband got to about the halfway point in his military career where we realized he could draw a military pension and maybe we could really retire when we're in our early 40s. And so we started looking into our those retirement accounts uh, and realizing, well, wait a second, like we've been socking money away there, but we can't touch it until we're 59 and a half. Like that doesn't <laughs> help us. And so we kind of started looking into, you know, other investment strategies and we had bought this rent house that we had kept um, at our very first duty station. We were just smart enough to do some very simple math and realize that, um, you know, we could buy a house that only cost $700, or $750 a month to hold and yet we could leave and then rent it for 950 bucks a month. And so we bought one, kept it as a rental as we moved our military career onward. And so I think it came from just looking at that and seeing the success of that and seeing how that was money we could actually access through cash out refinances and just that it was this dependable cash flow. And um, so it led us to kind of get serious about it and take our future into our own hands. And we kind of changed the dials and went from subscribing this traditional method to focusing really on real estate. And um, we had flipped a house, uh, did a live and flip at a previous duty station as well, and just really went, you know, full tilt on getting that reinvested in cash flowing real estate. Oh, those, re those live and flips are always fun, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, it was scary at the time, but in hindsight, it was a blast. <laughs> you no, know, oh, we, we had to live in a corner of our house once when we were just renovating the whole thing and putting up plastic wrap so that the kids wouldn't inhale everything which when you're washing your coffee mugs um right next to your toilet you do ask yourself like what am i doing <laughs> why can't i just live somewhere else for a little while well because it costs money so <laughs> right um right. but yeah you know someday you get to a point where you actually can live somewhere else and, and still do the flip um right. so good for you and then you found real wealth and started investing in uh in some of the markets that we promote where, where did you start yeah. So we started in Ohio. Um, we were kind of open to anywhere. We have sort of a high risk tolerance, I think, a very healthy risk tolerance. Our lifestyle just demands it of us. We're constantly picking up and moving somewhere else. So right. we could really look at it, I think, truly objectively and be kind of comfortable with long distance. Um, so after we flipped that house, we moved to Europe. And we were living overseas, wanted to get all that cash that we freed up, reinvested as fast as possible. And so we looked to the turnkey model as a way to limit our risks of doing more <laughs> rehab work, um, but also just maximize the return, you know, use as much leverage as possible and come in. So we actually found Real Wealth Network through just an ocean of podcasts and um, information and connected, started connecting with some of the teams. And we're drawn to Ohio first because of its high cash flow. I mean, we're really concerned with creating maximum cash flow yield with minimal capital invested. We wanted to stretch that dollar out as far as it could for, for cash flow um, return. So Ohio is where we started. Ohio is a great place to start for that reason. I mean, so I think you still get some houses for around sixty or seventy thousand dollars. Yeah. Although maybe not in the neighborhoods you you want to be in, but it, it's amazing. Even a C neighborhood in Ohio, in certain parts yeah. of it are 
pretty, pretty nice. Yeah. So, it's done surprisingly you, well. Yeah. Did you make money on that flip that you were able to reinvest it into buy and hold or were you using retirement funds? Yeah. So we made money on the flip and, and it was a lot of that getting reinvested. Um, but it was also just kind of this shift from, I mean, we're, we're what I guess people call dinks that the double income, no kids. Mm -hmm. Um, and so again, we were just, we were able to live way below our means and just sock, you know, our savings into retirement accounts. So once we kind of realized, Hey, real estate is really where we want to focus. It was just a matter of kind of adjusting those dials and, and living below our means and uh, buying as many properties as, as we could safely do. Well, tell me more about that because it seems the more people I know who make more money, they end up spending more money and forget what it's like to live on less. So how, how were you able to do that? Yeah. I mean, I think it's hard and it gets harder. I think the, the older you get and maybe the better you get at it, you realize like, Hey, I enjoy staying at the nice hotels when we travel and I enjoy driving a nicer car. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of it was just born out of kind of uh, understanding de the power of delayed gratification and realizing, and, and, and in true honesty, I've never felt like we had to like pinch pennies to make this strategy work. I still look back on our living situation and um, the great traveling we've gotten to do as we've lived in so many different places. And I don't feel like we had to sacrifice all of our comforts to do this. Um, but it was a, definitely a conscious choice to, you know, not buy the nice car and instead, and I can't help but do that now is look at like, okay, I can, I can buy a vehicle or I can buy a house. Like, and, and one creates money for me and one takes my money. And so I think it's just the repetition of that kind of exposure gets easier and easier to, to put your money where it makes sense. Yeah. I think that's the key is really, once you understand investing, then that's, and you have a goal. There's two things. When you understand what it can do for you and you have a goal, then it's so much easier to put all the money towards that, knowing that in the future, your assets will give you enough cash to buy the things that you want uh, right. at the equity or at, at your hard-earned income. Right. And I think I really want to, I mean, this goal of, we, I mean, we've spent his military career living far away from all of our family and all of the friends that we grew up with. And so I think that we were taking that into kind of our goal setting as well as like, hey, like, 10 years from now, you know, we can choose where we want to go. We don't have to go follow the job. We don't have to go, you know, follow, you know, orders that someone is giving us. We can choose. And if we've created financial freedom for ourselves, like we can choose wherever we want and we can go back with family. And then, you know, we don't have to be a slave to, you know, where the job offers are. And, you know, and then as a woman, like thinking about wanting to raise my own children and wanting to be a part of that and actively involved in that, like how great would it be if I could create passive income before I get to that point? And, you know, then be able to, you know, really engage in that how I want to when that time comes. So when do you see yourself, uh, I mean, starting a family sounds wonderful, but when do you see yourself being um, job optional? Um, well, it's hard to say, because this is, I think, the other thing that happens when you get really into this is you enjoy it. And so you start going <laughs> like, hey, like, why pay them off? Let's just keep going and right. see how big we can build this. So um, yeah, rather than live off the cash flow, let's use it to buy more. Right. right. If you read the notes that Ben, my investment counselor at Real Wealth, when I joined, if you read the notes that he took on our first conversation, it said that I wanted to be job optional in three years. And that was four years ago. So, um, you know, <laughs> I just, you know, and now I'm, I'm, I find myself in this place where I'm happy and content and enjoying and being fulfilled and working. So I don't know, um, you know, when we'll choose to do that, but the goal is to have the option completely for myself and for my spouse at, when he gets to that 20 year point in his career. So I'm only, uh, I guess eight and a half years away now. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay, well, we, we hope that you like uh, working at Real Wealth so much that you opt to keep your job. But um, So let's talk about that. You volunteered to be on one of our investor panels at Real Wealth. We were asking all the investment counselors, including Ben, you know, who's, who's your star uh, member who's you know, jumped in and bought property and really following their plan. You know, creating a plan and then following it, those are two huge steps. And your name came up. So we had you on an investor panel. Uh, I just remember sitting in awe of you. You were you, so intelligent, so passionate. It felt like when I started, you know, that um, you, you just can't get enough of it. You want to learn more and more and more and, and then take action on it. So I remember saying to Ben, um, 
find out if she's looking for work. <laughs> and, and then it wasn't, it was shortly after you said, Hey, are you guys, do you have an opening? So it was a really a natural. Now you are an investment counselor at Real Wealth. Now you're helping people who were in the same position you were not that long ago. So what, what is that like? Yeah. Well, I think I still have a lot of family and friends who think I'm involved in some kind of multi-level marketing scheme. <laughs> because okay, first, my family thinks so too. <laughs> yeah, first, you're buying all these homes through this property and now you're working for them. Like, do you want me to work for them? Like it's, it, but no, it, it's, um, it is so fulfilling. I, my background is in broadcast journalism. I worked in government consulting in adult education and developing um, content for the Department of VA and presenting it to you know service members as they left the service. And so I had all these skill sets that really aligned with a lot of what Real Wealth does and in, in educating people. And and then the opportunity to marry it with my personal passion of real estate and building this and really just having, I mean, over the period of a couple of years, just so many light bulbs going off and just really believing in this. So the opportunity to kind of marry those two things was perfect. I mean, divine, if you want to call it just the, the way that things happen. And, and um, but yeah, it's been, it's amazing. And I, truly feel so fortunate to get to spend my days talking with other people about something that I'm really passionate about and breaking it down for them in a way that doesn't feel quite so intimidating. Yeah, that first purchase can feel really overwhelming. Even even my daughter getting her uh, at age 24 to buy her first house, it was so overwhelming for her. And and now I'm telling her, you could do a cash out refi. You've made enough money in the past couple of years. You could take all the money you put into it out again. And she's like, what? <laughs> yeah. How do you do that? And and just so there's it's a whole new language. Um, a whole it's a it's a whole new way of life, really, when you start to understand investing. Now, let's talk about the webinar series that you just did. Um, I was really thrilled to see that for one, we are we're building leaders within the company, people like you. It's just really exciting. And that you took the seven steps for investors that I wrote many, many years ago, and you added to it and improved it. And that was the coolest thing. And then uh, presented that to our, our network last week. It's recorded and people can go check that out uh, just by going to Real Wealth. You have to join, but it's free to join. And then under the Learning Center, you'll find that. Uh, what was the title of that particular webinar? It's Fundamentals for Real Estate Investors fundamentals and it was done uh, just last week. Uh, so what would you say there were, there was a lot of steps, but what would you say is the starting place? The first step? Yeah. Well, the first one, I mean, first way I wanted to kind of orient people to like the value proposition of why real estate, you know, and I think so many people kind of misunderstand just some of the basics, some of the fundamentals. So we spent a fair amount of time just kind of covering, setting that baseline of why this is the asset class of choice. Um, but then when it comes to kind of putting those steps into action, I, I think the first biggest step is to get serious about your goals, you know, have a conversation about, you know, what, why is this something that I'm suddenly interested in? Mm -hmm. um, is it a retirement strategy? Is it a freedom bell? You know, is it just a diversification measure? Is it a way to pass on and leave something to my, my family members? You know, what is your why? What, what, what are the, the goals that you have? Um, because I feel like if that's out of line, like, this is all going to get too overwhelming and, and you probably won't follow through. So first is getting serious about, about the goals. Then I think the next most important thing is to understand where you're at um, and ask yourself some questions about you know, life. Like, am I planning to start a family and how might that impact the strategy? Am I going to be caring for my aging parents in the near future? And how would that impact the strategy? Um, am I planning on a career switch, which would impact my ability to get a loan? You know, so really, I think uh, taking an honest evaluation of where you're at, um, you know, allows you to kind of be realistic about about the plan moving forward. So that's, I think, the best place to start. Know where you want to go, and then be realistic about where you're at. So true. I mean, it's it's those we we've got to look at what's most important. Uh, it's easy to get lost in the numbers and, you know, I'm going to be a millionaire by this age, but what does that mean? What what does that give you? And I could tell you, for me, it's what you just said. Uh, real estate investments, buy and hold specifically, helped me be able to spend more time with my kids. I was done at three o'clock when they were done with school and I was 100% there for them. And now my mother is needing my care and I can go do that, you know? So it is 
so important to have those special moments. And um, so I can't, I, I could not agree enough that um, getting super clear on what, you know, what's that money going to give you? What is the, the, the why, as many people say, why am I doing this? And what will I get from it? Because, a mil- you know, I trust me, being a millionaire is, is no different than being, it's just really not that different. You still have the same people in your life generally. Um, you still have the same issues, maybe even bigger. Like if you have an addiction problem, it's probably going to get bigger because you have more money to feed, uh, you know, right. to feed that addiction. So um, it, it's not that different. But what really matters is getting more aware of what's important to you. And then real estate will allow you to do more of that. Right. I totally yeah. agree. And I think once you've kind of had that level set conversation with yourself, then you can start getting into kind of the mechanics of how. And mm-hmm. so the next steps all kind of start getting to a little more, you know, tactical, um, tactical measures, you know, understand your purchasing power, um, be realistic about how much money you have. I mean, the reality is it takes money in real estate to make money. Um, or you got to know someone who has money. Like it's not, it's not just being created out of, out of thin air. So, you know, I have conversations with investors all the time who they have these great goals and they want to hit a cash flow goal. Um, and some of them want to hit it very soon. And then the next question is always, okay, you know, you want to, you want to go on a vacation, you want to drive, well, how much gas do you have in your tank? And you know, <laughs> the answer, yeah. you know, sometimes is a little bit deflating. And, and I, and I feel that sometimes in a conversation with people, you have this reality check of, okay, you have a goal to create $10,000 a month in passive income. That's an ambitious goal. It's possible, but yeah. you're working with, you're starting with, you know, $30,000, like yeah, it's, it's it, so you've got to be realistic, I think, and understand, you know, what your your purchasing power is and how much you really need to create uh, or to get uh, moving towards that financial goal. And that maybe you're not ready for passive, but active like you, you maybe you can use that money and get your primary residence with just 3% down, right, fix it up take some, you know, refi it or, or sell it for a profit. There's ways to use that money and make money. Or when you really become educated, uh, you, you can invest other people's money. You know, there's probably somebody who'd love to lend on real estate at a five or 6% return when they're not finding that anywhere else, unless they're in real estate. So, oh my gosh, I, w- I could talk all day, but I have to go. So uh, Leah, uh, tell us again, how people can contact you if they want a strategy session at Real Wealth or to find this webinar? Yeah. So if you created a login account at realwealth.com, you are a member of Real Wealth Network and you have access to an investment counselor, myself, and there are three others. So um, we love engaging in these conversations with investors to really drill down on what's the why and then start helping them put together the how. Um, so you can always uh, connect with your investment counselor there. You can always connect with me directly at Leah at realwealth.com. Perfect. All right, Leah. Well, so great to connect with you. It almost feels like like we're in the same room, kind of, but at least we're in the same country now. <laughs> right. That's good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, welcome back to the U.S. Okay. And, uh, and thank you again so much for being here on The Real Wealth Show. Thanks. And thank you for joining me here on The Real Wealth Show. You can find out more about how to invest out of state with turnkey properties at realwealthshow.com.